on into Monday. Well, for us, it's all about the rain as we've talked about all week long. And add on top of this, three to five inches of rainfall. That means in the uh, almost week's period, we will have had up to a foot of rain here. And that means a big deal of flooding here expected to be going on through the weekend. So we'll keep you up to date, of course. What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So welcome to the rainiest Memorial Day weekend ever. We actually have a tropical storm heading this way. It's actually not gonna hit us, but it is heading this way and we're on the dirty side of the storm. So it's actually raining right now. And so that presents a real challenge for me when we're gonna talk about this weekend. The first thing to realize is all of this moist, unstable air, I know it makes you think of your ex-wife, but the other thing that it does is it creates this perfect storm for disease. And I did a video last week all about lawn diseases and how to treat them. And I actually have a free guide. If you'll click in the link in the description below, I will send you our free guide and some other ones on lawn disease control because it's something with the heat raging and all of this rain and everything else that's pretty much throughout the country, but it's definitely down here in Florida. It's something that you all are gonna have to tackle. So make sure you watch that video and get that guide. Also, as you may or may not be able to see here, I don't know if my man boobs are blocking it or not, but we do have a new t-shirt release. We also have this on a mug, and it's just in time for Father's Day. It's a great little logo here, and it says, smells like success. So I'll link in the description below to that if you'd like to pick up a t-shirt or mug just in time for Father's Day. So what do you do when you've had nothing but rain? This entire last week has been rainy. The lawn is super overgrown, and on top of that, it's gonna rain every day this weekend, pretty much all day. In fact, this is the only break that I've seen so far. It's noon right here now on Saturday. This is the best break that I've had all day, and it's still raining just a little bit. So the question then becomes, you know, do I let the lawn keep growing and not mow it wet? Because I know that we teach you guys, never mow a wet lawn, never mow a wet lawn. We tell you that all the time. I think the only person I know on YouTube that would probably mow a wet lawn on purpose is Connor Ward, but everybody else would heed my advice and not cut the lawn when it's wet. Now, cutting the lawn when it's wet is not the worst sin you can commit. I mean, it's really just a best practice. The reason we don't want to mow the lawn when it's wet is for two reasons. Look at this. This is the other thing that happens when it rains a lot. I mean, I am on top of this every freaking week. Check out those roots, John Perry. Anyway, the two reasons you don't want to mow a wet lawn are number one is because you won't get as clean of a cut when the lawn is wet and it'll shred the grass blades and it can allow disease entry, especially at this time of year. I've just mentioned that's something we need to be mindful of. The second reason is, is because it can cause clumping and clumping in a cut can actually cause areas of the lawn to die. If the clumps are really bad, they'll just smother a little spot right out. That is not good for the lawn and it looks terrible. But what are you gonna do? Here we have a trop storm coming. That means I'm not gonna get to mow at least for another week, for sure, and this is already a week overgrown. So I have to make a decision. Do I let it keep growing, or do I go ahead and suck it up and mow in the rain? So the way you determine that is you never, ever, ever wanna cut off 50% of the grass blade in one cutting. I know we go by the one third rule, which is 33%, and that's fine. Even if you push that to 40%, it's not the best thing in the world. But if you cut the lawn in half because it's overgrown so much, number one, you have a giant mess, and number two, that's gonna stress it really, really bad. Coming into the summer here with, again, disease raging, insects raging, all kinds of things, that is not a recipe for success, and it's not a recipe for domination. But we still have to make a decision here. So check this out, you can see this is a, a long blade. This was like the longest blade I could find. And this one here is about the average blade. But either way, you know, I mowed last weekend. Um, I've been out of town all week, so I wasn't able to actually mow during the week. I was gonna, you probably saw in the video here, I was gonna try to mow Thursday, but I couldn't do it, got rained out. So I'm already overgrown. I mean, look at this, let's just measure this out. Look at that, a solid what, like six and a half inches? Dang, I mean, that is, I mean, I'm gonna cut it four inches, so I'm cutting off two and a half already. I mean, you can do the math there. That's over 33%, right? And then here is this one. This is what the average length of the male blade is, and that's a four and a half. So, I mean, even at four and a half, I'm good, but I cannot let this go for two weeks, whether it's the uh, above average blade or the average blade, this needs to be cut. This can't sit for another week. One other thing that the more astute among you may be figuring out, because there's a tropical storm coming and because it's wet right now, I'm not gonna be able to apply anything this weekend. I'm gonna have to miss my Memorial Day Malorganite app. Even though I was prepared, 
I was ready to go down at a nice dose here, but I'm not gonna be able to do it. I have to make that right decision. Even though I wanna throw her down, it's not right to put fertilizer on ground that it's not saturated because I have sandy soil, so it drains pretty quick, but it is still got a lot of water in it, more than normal. And on top of that, trap storm downpours, that's gonna wash everything away. That would be completely irresponsible of me to do, to put any kind of fertilizer on this lawn, knowing that that kind of rain is coming. Plus it'd just be a waste. So I'm gonna have to wait. I'm not gonna be able to apply this weekend. It also means I can't really fly my flag for Memorial Day because I don't know, I just, I don't like to fly a flag in inclement weather. Um, but I'll probably fly it a little bit today while I'm out here mowing just because I do want to get in the spirit of it, but I won't even leave the flag out when it's raining. So based on how tall this is, I am gonna have to go ahead and cut it wet. It's gonna be messy and it's gonna be ugly, but I don't have a choice. I cannot let this grow anymore. And with the trop storm coming, it'll be a week before I can get back to it. So here we go, let's enjoy the wet mow. Okay, so the first tip here is stay clean. Now, what I like to do is I'll mow a trim pass here first and then clean up the sidewalk because what happens is I am mulching and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, but when you mulch, stuff gets on the sidewalk, of course. And so, you know, an hour later, if I come back and it's been raining on that stuff on the sidewalk, it will be stuck. So I mow the first pass here around the edges, then I blow everything back into the lawn. So that way I can stay a little bit cleaner. So I realized that it would be logical to use the bag for this trim pass, but a couple reasons for that. The first one is I've never used it and I don't want to get it all dirty and wet and all that. And I don't want to deal with all that cleanup. And then secondly, I don't really have anywhere to dump it. Um, I've got a couple spots that I could, but they're a little overloaded right now. Um, and I can also put it in the trash and send it out, but it's wet and it's going to stink and I don't want to deal with that. So what I'm doing is right now, because it's fairly dry, you can see it coming off the sidewalk as I decided to mulch. But you could use your bagger for the trim pass and do the same thing. The idea is to keep clean along the way. Another thing you want to consider here is by cutting the lawn you're going to create better airflow you know because it's going to be overly grown and overly long during the storm that's going to allow that because it's still going to be hot that's going to allow that disease to team down in there so by getting a cut i'm going to allow some better cooler airflow in there because disease is a real problem right now and hopefully this is just one more little hedge against letting it get any worse than what it is All right, so this area over here did turn out bad, and that's because this was the last area I did, so it was the wettest. It's still raining, as you can see. And uh, this is also where there's standing water. This is the lowest point of the lawn. You can actually see my, all my sprinkler, all my irrigation stuff gets flooded. Yeah, it's bad, I know, I gotta dig. I mean, I didn't create this problem. I moved in with it, but all the water just pools right here, and it actually flows off down that way. So this is a low spot here, and you can see, pulled up mud. This is horrible, this is bad. Probably should have just left this, but I don't really care about this part of the lawn anyway because it's that Bermuda St. Aug mix. But there you go, some of the detriment that can happen.
mowing the lawn in the rain. Not something I recommend you do, but I had no choice because again, as you can see, drop storm is here. With that, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Guy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the lawn. You didn't think the video was over here, did you? No, I, I gotta give you a couple more tips here. First thing is, the Time Master makes an excellent wet clothesline. Just saying. So here we are, it's uh, Sunday now, and it's been raining all morning. I've got a little bit of a break here, so I figured I'd take you guys out and at least show you what came of this, because it doesn't look that great, but I want you to at least see, you know, again, what came of it and how good the Time Master actually did. And then I do need to go ahead and weed whack an edge. I'm not gonna use a blade edger though, that's gonna be way too muddy and mussy, so I'm gonna use a weed whacker. I'm not the best weed whacker edger, in fact, I would say I'm not good at all but it's what I'm gonna do to avoid mess. So let's go get that done right now. I know some of you are gonna ask about the driveway. Look, clean as a whistle where all that got done. Nice rainstorm, took it on down. while the weather's broke right now. All right, so now that I'm done playing around, let's actually check out the quality of cut that we got. Um, I will say, no clumps anywhere, no clumps. So that would have been my first concern, would have been a lot of clumps, um, but the cut itself is not that good. Lots of missed spots, uneven areas, that's what you'd expect, I'll show you. Again, nothing against the mower, it didn't clump, which is the main thing I cared about, but yeah, definitely not the best cut in the world, not even close. Here you can see where I just ran those couple of extra passes. It looks a lot cleaner as compared to over there where I ran it when it was wet. So you can see a big difference. Dang, yesterday you guys were standing up tall, wide-bladed and chubby, ready to go. Now you're nothing but skinny and shriveled. Okay, look, this video is not sponsored. I bought this last year sometime when I bought my Makita, you know, drills and all that and, and grinder and all that stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get the weed whacker just to test it out for you guys. Um, I realized that there is, you know, there's a need for some of y'all that are not big lawn guys, but you have these batteries already for your trade tools or your, you know, your, your screw guns and stuff like that. Maybe, maybe using the weed whacker, maybe using that battery on the weed whacker can be convenient for you. I don't know. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? These, these Milwaukee, DeWalt, Makita, they're, they've been trying to break into this market for a while. I figured I would test one since I have the batteries anyway, and I actually like Makita brand. So there you go. Not sponsored at all. This thing has the same problem with every other one of these that loads this way. It's uh, the string gets too tight in there. I hate these kind of feeds. I think if you make this kind of feed for your trimmer, you hate your end user. And then I have to open it up, watch this. Freaking mess. Oh yeah, see?
See that gets all knotted up in there. Garbage. If you're gonna go to the, you know, the trouble to market this, why don't you make a head that is like simple and easy? You know what I'm saying? It's not that hard to figure that out. This is the most frustrating thing with any weed whacker and Makita. You failed.